In this video, I will briefly describe the working principles of a centrifugal pump. Unfortunately, a short video will not be sufficient to describe the complex working principles of a centrifugal pump. So in this video, I will just describe the main components of this interesting pump. In general, pumps can be separated into two different branches. The first branch is positive displacement pumps, such as root pumps. And the second branch is the dynamic pumps, like the centrifugal pump. A centrifugal pump consists of a rotating section, which consists of a shaft and impeller, and a fixed section, which consists of a casing cover and bearings. For the observer, you, the fluid enters the centrifugal pump from the top of the screen and is expelled radially in a plate parallel to the computer screen. As you can see, the input shaft rotates the impeller inside the casing, which accelerates the flow toward the exit. It's needless to say that to prevent backflow, the impeller should be continuously rotating. Due to this fact, only a few centrifugal pumps are self-priming, whereas the rest must be primed manually. In other words, they must be filled with fluid before they start. If the flowing medium is a gas, we name it centrifugal compressor, and the working principle of the centrifugal pump or compressor are closely related. The impeller shown in this figure has a complex geometry and is used for centrifugal compressors. A centrifugal pump converts shaft power to kinetic energy of fluid by rotating the impeller. The rotating impeller expels fluid from its outer rim with a higher velocity than the inlet velocity. The faster the impeller rotates or the larger its diameter than the impeller will generate the highest velocities at its outer rim. And the higher the exit velocity, the higher the kinetic energy will be of the expelled fluid. Later, the inside of the casing of the pump, high kinetic energy of fluid is converted to increased pressure by expanding the casing outlet. The blades on the impeller could have a forward, straight, or backward curvature with respect to the rotation direction of the impeller. The most widely used impeller has a backward curvature on its blades because they are the most efficient in most of the desired conditions. Now imagine that the centrifugal pump is rotating with a constant RPM and discharging fluid immediately without any resistance to the environment. In this situation, the outflow rate is the highest from the pump. Now imagine that we connect a vertical pipe to the exit of the pump. The flow rate from the free end of the pipe will be less than the without pipe we described earlier. If we increase the length of the vertical pipe, the flow rate will gradually decrease, and, the, and a certain length, the flow rate of the pipe will be zero, and this is called the shot-off head. To understand the working principles of a centrifugal pump or any turbo machinery, one should have knowledge of velocity triangles. All complex calculations of turbo machinery can be understood easily with the velocity triangle concept. A velocity triangle is drawn by knowing the vector nature of three important velocities. C, the absolute velocity of the fluid is observed by a stationary observer away from the pump, which is shown here in the orange color. U, the blade linear velocity is also observed by an observer away from the pump. The blade linear velocity will be zero at the center of the impeller rotation and linearly increase to get to its highest velocity at the rim of the impeller. In this video, the linear velocity of a point on the impeller will be shown in the green arrow. Please note that the impeller's linear velocity will always be perpendicular to the line joining the point of interest to the center of the impeller. The point of interest being the point where we measure the linear blade velocity. The relative velocity, r, of a fluid is observed by an observer on the rotating impeller and is shown here in the blue color. One important fact about the relative velocity is that it should always be tangent to the impeller blades at all times to get the best efficiency. In the velocity triangle, the vector addition of linear velocity u and relative velocity r should give absolute velocity c. 
Since there are infinite numbers of points on the impeller, we can draw an infinite number of triangles. However, engineers are only concerned with velocity triangles at the inlet and exit of an impeller. As you can see in the animation, we stop the rotation of the impeller in order to see the flow inside the impeller by an observer on the impeller. Notice the inlet and exit triangles shown here. As you can see, relative velocities are always tangent to the rotating blades. Also notice that the exit relative velocity and absolute velocities are in the opposite directions. An observer on the impeller will see the flow direction as shown by the blue arrow, which is the opposite direction of the exit flow, while an observer outside will see the flow toward the exit. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked what you watched here, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.